You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today we're looking at merging overlapping lines using Dynamo for Revit. Um, so originally we actually looked at uh, a workflow using Rhino Inside uh, where we looked at merging all the overlapping center lines of walls of rooms so we could convert them into area boundaries. And we're going to look at a way you can do this using Dynamo as well. Um, so the problem was that obviously when these rooms all overlap on the corners and on the edges, they have double ups in lines which generates uh, model warnings. So I've actually been working with uh, Wasim Yabi um, just on the side, just for a bit of fun. Um, he, he works at a, an organization called Topologic BIM, and they look at using topology as a way to analyze geometry in Dynamo and Grasshopper um, as an alternative means. And we're gonna be able to use this in order to solve this workflow as well. So I'd like to thank um, Wasim for actually collaborating with me and also providing the base workflow that I'll be sharing with you today. Um, he's done a lot of really great work um, for the industry and I had a really good time working with him on this workflow and also developing my, my workflow in Rhino Inside as well. So Topologic, um, they work with a system called Topology, uh, which is a, probably a system you may have heard of before, um, but it essentially means that there's a relationship between every element involved in a geometric object or set of objects. So you can always go back down to simpler elements or back to more complex elements very easily um, using uh, these top, top topologic transformations, I guess you might call them. So you have various classes um, that are a little bit different to the, what you might be used to in Dynamo. So some of these you might recognize like faces and edges, um, but for example, vertex point, it's a different name um, and it behaves a little bit differently, but things like cells, shells and faces um, are different in how they interact and how they can be deconstructed back into their base topology. So we're gonna be taking advantage of this in today's workflow. So there is actually a lot of resources on um, Topologic's website, so definitely do check them out. But today we're gonna to be using two custom packages. Um, so we're gonna be using the Topologic package, obviously. Um, this can be downloaded from their website under the software section. I'll be using the latest version, which is 1.3.0. And I'm gonna be building in Dynamo 2.3 in Revit 2020. Um, as well as this, I'm going to be using one node from my custom package, uh, Crumple, which you can find on the Aussie BIM Guru GitHub, um, available for download. And I'm just going to be using it to generate area lines from the curves that we're going to obtain. So without further ado, um, let's actually start exploring uh, Wasim's approach in Revit and Dynamo. Um, so I'm just in the Autodesk uh, sample, advanced sample project at the moment. Um, I'm just currently in a area plan, I believe. Uh, actually, I might need to just jump into a new one. Okay. So I've just, I've just created an, an, a new area plan. Um, and what I'm gonna be doing is essentially, I think I've already deleted all the pre-existing area lines. So I don't think there's any, now there's no area separation lines left here. We're gonna be generating area separation lines on the center of all the walls. Uh, so we're gonna to have to manage out that double up or the overlap. So if I go to architecture, room and area, area and volume computation, um, I'm just gonna change my computation to all center just to show you what we're aiming to do. So see how it sort of lands on the center of the wall now? So we're gonna be aiming to make a common edge wherever this occurs. And Topologic is the way. So we're gonna go Manage Dynamo, and I'm just gonna boot up Dynamo. Might have to resize it. Cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna probably just make Dynamo full screen. And I'm just gonna make a new script. Um, I'm just gonna work in automatic mode just to make things a bit easier. So we're just gonna be collecting all the rooms that we can see in our view, because even though we're in an area plan, we can still see the rooms. So we're gonna go all elements of category in view. It's important you are in an area plan as well, because you can't create area lines in anything but an area plan. So we're gonna get a category by name. And we're just gonna be collecting the category of rooms. So we're gonna get the name rooms, just in a code block in this case. And then for our view, we need to get the active view and we need to get the current document. And then we should have all of our rooms. In this case, there's 31 of them. And then from these, we're gonna get their center boundary. So we're looking for room center boundary. And this should return a list of curves for each room. 
but we will have double ups on the edges of some of these curves. So at the moment, we should have, I believe it's 324 curves. Um, yes, we have 324. So we're gonna be managing these down using topologic now. So the first thing we need to do is actually convert our geometry to topology. So it's really easy to do that. Um, you just do topology by geometry. Might need to find it in the actual package itself. Uh, in this case, I think it'll be under core. Uh, almost had it. Oh, topology by geometry. And this will take any geometric object in Dynamo and return its equivalent topologic counterpart. So in this case, uh, I'm going to be converting this into edges, um, the equivalent class in topology. I'm just going to, uh, I'll keep previewing these for now because you can't actually see uh, topology. Um, you have to actually convert it back to geometry in order to see it. So I believe um, in this case, there should be a, a geometry conversion um, from topology somewhere in here. It's been a little while since I've used this package, so I am still sort of remembering where, where everything's located. I do have a reference, I'll just maybe quickly check. Um, where this is located, it's topology.geometry. So in this case, uh, maybe lurking somewhere else. I'll try finding it just by typing in the name explicitly. There we go, Top topology.geometry finds it. And this will return it back into its equivalent class. So in this case, we can get curves and lines. I might just change my geometry scaling as well, just to make sure I'm in extra large so that I manage out those warnings. So you can see that it's really easy to, to work back and forth between um, topologic classes. So we're gonna take these edges and we're gonna start working with them. Um, so in this case, we've got our geometry. So now we need to create wires and these are a little bit like poly curves, um, but they don't have to be joined curves as far as I understand. Um, so we're gonna be creating a wire by edges in this case. And this will take each sublist and generate wires from these edges instead. So in this case, I believe it looks like we're probably still gonna get a similar number of elements in most sublists. But some of these have been joined where they meet. So I think this does rationalize elements into closed curves. Um, so some of these must be uh, individual curves, even when they're in Dynamo as well at the moment. But these have created essentially closed curves. Um, what we can do now is create a face using those wires. So we're gonna create a planar face. And this essentially should create surfaces um, or topologic faces in this case. Um, in this case, I'll just go and check out the, the geometry that we have right now, just to see what we're actually looking at. So at the moment we should have surfaces. So we can see now we've converted all these closed curves uh, and there's a lot of columns in some of these rooms, for example. So some rooms do have more than one surface involved. Um, so in this case, we will need to go and manage out these columns. So there's a few ways to do this. Um, the way that I'm gonna use is to use a remapped range for the areas of the faces. So in this case, I'm gonna call on a face utility from Topologic, and I'm just gonna return the area of a face. And from here, I'm gonna be just trying to manage out the really small areas. We can see some of them are around 70,000. Um, now you could just manually check for 71,000 and try to assume that all your columns are the same size. In my case, I'm actually gonna go and use the math.remap range node. And I'm going to take those numbers as sublists, and I'm going to work at level two. So I'm going to remap each respective list on its own. And I'm going to be working between the minimum of zero and the maximum of one. Now it's really important to note that some of these, some of these lists only have one element and a remap range will return, in this case, a not a number or an NAN in that case. So we do need to manage these into uh, a Boolean mask. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to check, in this case, if uh, area is less than 0.05. So in this case, I'm taking anything that's above 5%, or well, I'm checking if anything is below 5% of the range of the areas in each list. The reason why I've done a less than is because this will return a false for lists that have one element on their own, because obviously this element isn't a number, so it can't be less than 0.05. If I did greater than, the element's not a number, so it's still false. So it's really important to use a less than in this case. And I can apply this to a filter by Boolean mask. So in this case, I'm going to take my, my original face by wire. And in this case, our outlist will be what we continue with. So if we just check out our outlist, now we should, in this case, have one topologic face per room. Sometimes you may have more than one face. It depends on the room's geometry and how it's set up. Uh, ideally, you should just have one though. And obviously you can play with this threshold number if you need it to be smaller or larger, depending on the size of some of those um, elements enclosed in the room. 
we're then going to create a shell using those faces. So this is a little bit like a polysurface um, in that it allows all these faces to be combined. So I'm going to take my... I might flatten these first as well, actually. I'm just going to... Just going to bring these all to one level, just because we only really want to look at the faces all together now. So I'm just going to be flattening all these faces together into a topologic shell, so now all these faces belong to one object. From this, we can obtain the edges of the topology. And the edges are different now because they're a part of a shell, so they're analysed in a different way. So if we go and get the edges of the topology, and we just check how many we have, we can see now we only have 150 edges. So this, ha this process has naturally went and found those overlapping lines and turned them into just one, which is brilliant. Um, one step that uh, Wasim showed me as well is that we can also identify which of those edges were originally overlapping. So in this case, we can actually look at these edges in context of their face and find how many faces are adjacent to the edges, which allows us to find non-manifold edges in this case. So in this case, I'm going to get the faces from the topology. So we can actually work the other way, which is really interesting. So we can take our edges and work back in the other way and say how which faces relate to which edges. Really interesting. Um, I was really surprised when it actually supported this workflow. That's the beauty of topology, that you can work between all, all levels of relationships in all directions. It's pretty impressive, I must say. From here, we can count how many faces are relevant to each edge. So I'm just going to get a count node. And in this case, we're just counting each sublist. So we do need to work at uh, we could just do a longer slicing in this case, or we could work at level 2. I'll just work at level 2. Now we're just going to say which of these are equal to 2. Just using a little code block formula. And again, we can just apply this using a filter by Boolean mask. So we can take our top topology edges and we can filter them. So in this case, our in list is going to be any faces that have more than one, any edges with more than one face adjacent to them. And the opposite will be any edges with just one, or less than two, essentially. So we can find our naked edges and our non-manifold edges in this case. So what I can do with these is just probably preview them. So I might just go back and turn off this center boundary. And we'll just use some geometry color previews. But first we'll get our geometry. So we're going to get one of those topology.geometry nodes. And maybe convert these back into their respective edges. So we can see now these are our edges uh, that are between more than one room. And likewise, we can go and get our naked edges as well. So a really brilliant way to really easily filter down those conditions. Um, what we can do now is just get a geometry color by geometry color. And we'll just apply two different colors in this case. I'll just get a color palette in this case and we'll just um, we'll just pick some, some pretty stark colors. Let's just pick, a, pick that purpley blue. And we'll just pick a pick a red or something, something similar to that. And I'm just going to stop previewing these, and we're just going to preview the coloured version, so you can just see the difference. And now you can really clearly see that um, the topo topologic has successfully um, identified these conditions. Um, so this is a really quick and easy way to do it. And because it's in Dynamo, it's obviously much more direct than Rhino Inside as well. Having said that, Rhino Inside is also a very quick way to do this once your script is written. From here, um, you can literally just check if your edges don't cause any overlap just by checking if they generate a warning when they when they turn into area lines. So I'm going to just go back to my edges and get their geometry. So in this case, I just have all of my edges. And in this case, I'm just going to be using the area line from curve from the crumble package. So I'm going to go to Revit, areas and area lines from curves. In this case, I'm just going to get my active view. So I'm just going to go back and get this document current active view. And then in this case, that's my view. And these are my curves. Um, so I'll just go to manual mode. And in this case, I'll just make Dynamo just a little bit smaller so we can see Revit. And if I run this, we should go and create those area lines in the active view. Uh, in this case, we just need to run. It looks like it's doing it. I'll just need to make sure I'm in a in an area plan. I'm in an area plan. In this case, it looks like we got a no, but it looks like it might have worked. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like it worked. I think I've run it twice actually. Um, so it looks like it's generated the area lines twice. Whoops. Let's just try. Yeah, there we go. So now if I isolate these area lines. 
we can see that we have no warnings associated to them. So we've essentially successfully broken down these wall center lines into area boundaries, um, which is great, whilst also filtering out some of these smaller columns um, from the area itself, which allows us to really quickly and easily um, generate an area plan from a set of rooms. And we can easily just start adjusting some of these edges um, if we want to, to start sort of finessing some of those finer relationships between the areas and the rooms. So um, the files for this will be on GitHub, including the scripts. Um, so I hope that you find these useful and interesting. I'd like to thank um, Wasim again for collaborating with me on this one. And I really enjoyed um, what we reached together as a solution, uh, both in Rhino and also in Dynamo. And I do encourage anyone to reach out to Wasim if you're interested in finding out more about Topologic, um, or just reaching out to me if you want to do similar collaborations. Um, because you know th this is something I do enjoy doing, as long as you're willing to work as well as me, like I won't just work for you, it's a, it's a collaboration, um, definitely. Uh, but feel free to reach out. So if you're not already following and subscribing to my channel, um, feel free to do so. I make videos two times a week. In this case, but we made three videos in one day, so I guess we did a few more videos than, than, than two. Um, but yeah, I guess it's just a treat. <laughs> so hopefully I'll see you in uh, future videos. Um, if you have any queries, feel free to leave them down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care.